There's the charger. Yesterday we rode up by Bridgeport, got this door. Now this door is pretty decent. And it's very, very little work to do. A little bit of dings here, gotta work them out a little bit. A little bit of work to it, but the big part is it's not all mangled up, so we'll be able to use it. And when I say we, mainly I mean Connor, we'll be able to use it to size up, you know, exactly where his his line's got to end up for his rear quarter panel. So that's pretty cool. We also picked up this door. Uh, it's another charger door. It's not as in great a shape. Got some rust. Got some problems here. But he's thinking he might just use it to build this door out the rest of the way. Because you'll be able to take this panel, is what he was lacking, and uh, use this shape. That's what's kind of been missing right here. That's fill this giant hole. These are very important body lines, so I want to get them as close as possible. Yeah, without trying to make it out of plastic. Yep. Oh, I think Connor knew it all along, but I just figured this out. There's a body line here on this. It just goes back and fades out right through here. On this door, 50 years old, it's been bondoed so much, you can't even hardly tell it's gone already. That body line's gone. So at some point in this car's life, when it was repaired, they blended that body line away. They just filled it. You can see it's got thick bondo on it. They filled it and uh, sanded it down and the body line went away. So. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's things, those are the kind of things that happen when you're monkeying around with these old cars. So you're gonna cut this out all the way down here. You... Yeah. But this one's good, except for you're missing that body line. So this you're gonna get this body line back. The white door was really solid. And these were the scallops of it. But everything has been rounded because it got dented here and then they bonded it incorrectly. Right. Because you so, can see these scallops are sharp. The whole idea is to get the sharp scallops in there. And it, these, this is nice and solid all the way to here. It's got a little rust there. but So pretty much going to take two useless doors and, and make a door that's, you know. Decent. That I'd have to buy for three, four hundred dollars. Right. Like that door. Which is a nice door. Yeah. <laughs> I wish there were two. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been better. Yeah. Anyway, let's get you on the road. This is something, you know what? You can hold off on this for quite a while, though. You never know if a door may pop up before you get to this job. Okay. I'll probably just build this door <laughs> and get it over with the bolt out of the car and be happy with it because, because it's what you have. Okay, that makes sense, too. Because something that's done is yeah. done. It's done. All right. Push on what? Push on that. Push that down. Watch your finger. Push it hard. Oh, don't don't zap my finger. Ow! Oh, the pain, agony. <laughs> nice. That was awesome. So what you do? Another section job? I did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are you gonna call this car patches? <laughs> oh, cheap. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> well, build another fender. Took parts out of this fender, which is pretty crusty, to build that fender. And then what you do, you had a bad spot here, so you had to make a yeah, piece. You did have to make a patch there. piece. This fender was all bashed in, and that fender wasn't, but it was kind of rough. In fact, it was pitted on the back. It was too pitted here. The rest of it was decent enough to use. So I made this little dog leg. And I just tacked it there so I can run the grinder down there and get a nice seam and do a butt weld. Kind and do of. a nice butt weld. Yeah, down through that. I just wanted to put a little pressure so it gets the right curve. There's actually a slight body line there you got to watch out for. It's just hard to tell with all these dull parts, but... Yeah, once there's a gloss on there, you'll see it. Oh, yeah. So, so we got to get that right so it doesn't have a wiggle in it. Yep. All right, cool. And then you're going to do something with this. Yeah. I think cut it out I square and put a piece in there. Yeah. It's going to look good, Con. Yep. We are trying to figure out what this tiger stripe is all over this fender, what they did back in the day that had that pattern on there. I don't think that was on purpose. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like somebody painted it up for like a demo car. Charger demo car. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I've said it a hundred times, didn't I? 
Back in the day, you could buy a running charger for like 700 bucks. Yeah. You, don't, you don't do that anymore. What's Connor making today? I'm making the um, corner extensions for the charger. These, you could buy them stamped for like 85 bucks a piece. Or? Or you can make them yourself. There you go. So, so where's that go? All right, we're on back of the charger. Yeah, so what it does is it, it uh, connects this valence panel to the quarter panel, right? And it's very visible part because the bumper on a charger is way up here. Oh, it's this guy. Yeah. That corner. So it rounds around here. Uh -huh. It's got this body line that extends up, okay? And it's a nice, it tucks it in and it makes a real bevel. How close you got it? Um, well, I made it in two pieces, Ooh. mainly. It's starting to look good, huh? Yeah, so you get it in there like that, right? Wow. So I did it in two pieces. First thing I did was I followed the contour of the quarter, mm -hmm. okay? I had a piece that had this, that nice round to it. And I put an angle on it and I shrunk it a little bit, right? With a shrinker stretcher gizmo? Yep. So I built one piece like that. And then I built another piece that is square to here and, and uh, comes off the valance. And then I held one piece there. I took a piece of, uh, I took a pencil. And uh, as I was holding that right where I wanted it, I took the pencil and I, I scribed the backside to follow this contour. Uh huh. And then I did the same thing and I met them close enough. So then I held both pieces in place and uh, overlapped them. So they were, they were where I wanted them. I marked them and I tacked it together up like this. Boom, boom, boom. Wow, so you got your curve, you got... I've got it so it meets in the right spot. The profiles. Yep. But on a charger, the real ones are very rounded. So I welded a, a strip of 16 gauge, a nice thick metal in the back. I see that. Tacked it all in there, okay. Uh-huh. And that's giving me enough meat to grind away the edge. Oh, yeah. I'm going to grind away the edge. And, you're and I've got out. that nice piece in there still. And I'm going to form it with welding until it's the, the, the nice bevel shape that I want it to be. It's going gonna, it's gonna to finish that off for me. Once I made one pattern, it was really kind of simple. Yeah. First thing I did was I made this valance pattern. And you just make the inverse of it. I copied them. So it, it went pretty, pretty fast for that. Well, that's what I did over on the Studebaker, too. Yeah. And surprisingly, making them symmetrical... You know, it worked out pretty good for yeah. the car, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I was a little relieved. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good to know symmetrical pieces fit. Yeah. That's crazy. The valance on these chargers does not tack to the inner cross member. Oh, it just floats there? It floats. Hmm. The only thing holding it is this wrap corner, around then. the corner. Okay, so that was something I was confused about, and I looked into it more. Because I thought, oh my gosh, this yeah, is, that should hook it somewhere. Attaches there, well, I'm way off, but no, that's a that's a floating piece, and the structure is is this. So, I think that was part of the design so that it could catch a lot of dirt and rot quicker. Yes, it definitely <laughs> helped in the rotting process. <laughs> so you got that patch nice in there. Yep. In. I need to grind it off. Looking good, and you got it so the door does hang properly. Yep. It's torqued right. Yeah, I've got that in there. My used frame rails all patched in. I gotta do a bunch more welding and grinding. Make it look pretty. So I grabbed another spool of wire when I was up at the weld store? I, I should have just done a three day printing with the welder, you know? Yeah, yeah. print the charger. Yeah, well. Yeah. And this is coming together. It is. So, two junkie fenders to make one junkie fender. Yep. Man, it's a lot of work. Uh, I don't have that much time in this either. It's probably another, probably another three hours. Yeah. I'll tell you what, a lot of the time is just tacking slowly. I like to get three or four things all in the same area to weld so that I can tack them all together and give everything enough time to cool. Yeah. Because you, you know, to close up a whole seam takes a while. Get a nice smear of Bondo on it, and you set to go.
Yeah, that, that will take a little bit of Bondo. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's really not bad. You got, oh. the, you got the shape. I do. It's got the shape, so it's not going to be terrible. It's going to take a nice patch through there and a big patch through here. Well, they don't make filler so that nobody uses it. <laughs> I love Bondo. <laughs> All right, I'm going back to the Studebaker.